Today, we're designing and making a mountain-inspired lamp with a laser cutter. To design this lamp, we'll be using a program called Rhino and start by creating the overall shape of the frame. For this project, it'll be in the shape of a diamond. To get the shape, I draw a rectangle that's 6 inches deep by 8 inches wide and draw a series of polylines connecting the center points of the rectangle. This helps me ensure that the opening will be wide enough for my hand to fit inside and for a light bulb to be installed. When the overall frame was complete, I drew a slot at a quarter inch deep by an eighth inch wide and decided to cut it at an angle into the frame. This will hold each vertical panel at an angle to reflect the light and create a warm glow from the natural color of the walnut plywood that we're using for this project. Each edge will have 13 slots which will add to the density and emphasize the visual repetition of the angled panels. Once the slots were created on each side of the frame, the next step was to design the vertical panels. This project focuses on a simplicity of design, so I decided to make each panel a rectangle that attaches to two frames at the bottom. The first piece would be roughly four inches tall, and the following ones will grow by a quarter of an inch at the top. The design will be mirrored across the center of the width of the frame, so two sets of the panels will need to be cut and installed. With the panels designed, the last component of this project is the frame that holds the light fixture base and bulb. To create this, I copy the frame that we've already designed and I add a 3 quarter of an inch frame at all four points of the diamond towards the center of the frame. I draw the circle cutout for the light fixture base, offset it by 3 quarters of an inch, and clean it up by trimming all the overlapping lines. Then, I create a 3D model of the product by extruding all of the shapes to an eighth of an inch, which is the thickness of the plywood that I plan to use for the project. I rotate the panel so that they're vertical in the 3D view, and I move each one into place. As I'm building the model, I also refine the design of the product whenever I see an opportunity to improve it or if I discover that there's an error. It's better to fix everything now to save time later in the build. By the end of this process, this is what the 3D model looks like. Now, I gather all my materials, including 8th inch walnut plywood, paper masking tape, utility knife, plastic card to apply the tape, light fixture base, Edison light bulb, and super glue. I apply the paper masking tape by unrolling it, aligning the edges with the plywood, and getting the air bubbles out with my plastic card. This will help protect the plywood from scorches, burns, and debris from the laser. I load up my Glowforge laser cutter, insert the walnut plywood, set up my file in the online interface, and start the process of laser cutting. Now that I've started making lamps with my laser cutter again, I'm remembering how much I enjoy the process because coming up with the unique shapes and designs are helpful for thinking about how they relate to architecture projects that I'm currently designing. I like to think of these unique lamps as being a smaller scale version of a building or a component of one. It's also fun to think about the different ways these pieces can come together to create a three-dimensional product. I'm also excited to use an Edison bulb, which is the first time I've ever purchased and used one for any of my projects. I love the idea of having a light fixture where the bulb is part of the visual aesthetic of the overall product. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge laser cutter for yourself, I'll share a link in the description section of this video that'll get you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. With all of the pieces cut, I use blue painter's tape to hold all the pieces together as I transfer the sheet to my work table. Then, I remove all of the paper masking tape while keeping the panels together so that they don't get mixed up. If they do, just remember that the only difference are the heights of each piece and there should be two of each with the exception of the first and last pieces. These two will be installed at the front center and back center of the frame. Using a lint-free cloth, I apply a natural oil finish to the surface of the panels and frames. It's easier and quicker to do this step now instead of waiting until the entire piece is assembled. Since I'm applying the finishes before the product is assembled, I'll be using Maxi Keyer Super Glue to join the panels onto the frames. To assemble this mountain-inspired lampshade, I keep the panels organized in two separate areas, take the first and smallest piece as well as the last and longest one, apply super glue to the joints, and install them onto both frames. Since they're on opposite sides, they'll hold the frames and help with installing all of the remaining panels. When the first and last panels are installed, 
I repeat this process starting with the shortest pieces to the longest ones and back down to the shortest ones. This makes the installation easy because we're just working our way around the entire frame. With the frames and panels assembled, we just need to install the light socket and bulb and the mountain inspired lamp is complete. I love the simple aesthetic of this light fixture and the warm glow from the light emanating from the Edison bulb reflecting off of the surface of the walnut plywood. This project gave me an idea for architecture designs that I can't wait to try. It's my favorite part of designing all of these craft projects on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out my wood products playlist and consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you again next week.